اعطنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا مهتد له ودينا مرشدا الحمد لله الراحم الحمد وقادر الكون شديد العقاب ذو الفضل لا اله الا هو واليه المصير اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد اذا رضيت ولك الحمد على حمدنا اياك يا رب العالمين My dear brothers and sisters, I began by praising Allah Azza wa Jalla, the one whom we praise, and the one whom we ask for help and forgiveness, and I seek refuge by Allah from the evil of myself and the evil of my deeds. Whomsoever Allah has, none will be able to decide. And whomsoever Allah allows to be decided, none will be able to die. And I praise Allah Azza wa Jalla, the forgiver of the sins, the accepted of repentance, the severe of punishment. Nothing is comparable to him to whom we shall all return.
Allah says in a in a chap in, in the beautiful chapter in the Quran, titled by Hud alayhi salam, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim." Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif lam ra. Kitab. Uhtimat ayat. Thumma fusilat kulla min hakim qadir. Allah ta'abudu illa Allah. Inni lakum minhu nadir wa bashir. Wa astaghfiru rabbakum thumma tubu ilayhi. يمتعكم متاع الحسنة إلى أجل مسمى ويؤتك من فضل فضلا وإن تولوا فإني أخاف عليكم عذاب يوم كبير. Beautiful chapter titled by one of the prophets of Allah عز وجل addressing at the beginning of the chapter a beautiful concept a concept that Allah عز وجل has sent down this book with book آيات محكمات آيات منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب as Allah to us in Those are ayat to be comprehended and understood by the scholars of the deen. There are others that are easy to be digested and comprehended by an average person. And Allah has made this beautiful book, this Quran, and sent it down with book, ayat, muhkamat, and mufassalat for one purpose, which is Allah ta'ala. So that you may not worship none except Allah Azza wa Jal. So you may worship none except Allah. I am a warrior to you from the punishment of Allah. And at the same time delivering for you the glad tiding of being from those who will be following the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal in their life. And furthermore, by establishing the ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal and unifying Him, and being a true servant of His, that you need to exercise this ibadah that we are asked to exercise on a, on a frequent basis. وَأَنْسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ Seek the forgiveness of your Lord. يُمَتِّعْكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا لَلَّهِ Interestingly, there is another chapter in the Quran also titled by another prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is a chapter called Nuh, and in which Allah Azza wa Jal says on behalf of Nuh, so it's not only our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have encouraged us to be mindful of istighfar throughout our lives as he said that قُلْ إِنِّي لَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ وَلَا أَتُوبُ وَأَتُوبُ لَيْهِ فِي الْمَجْلِسِ أَكْتَرَ مِنْ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً that I seek istighfar and forgiveness to Allah Azza wa Jal in one setting all our settings that's how important this ibadah of istighfar is. This is a ibadah that all the prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal have come to warn their, their followers and to ask them besides worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal and exercise the full ubudiyah, full submission to Allah Azza wa Jal as well as to do the istighfar. So what's istighfar? Is it only a word we say by the mouth and is this the only formula that we say to Allah Azza wa Jal to exercise in our ibadah throughout the istighfar. Istighfar is from istighfar or maghfirah, which is covering, and we're asking Allah to cover our sins, the mistakes that we have done in our life. And if you recall what we find in Surah Al-Qadr, in the dua of Aisha radiallahu anha, in which she said, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afu fa'fu anhu. Ya Allah, you are forgiving, therefore forgive, erase my mistakes, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But this is a constant ibadah that we are, 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 are obligated to engage in on a, not a daily basis, but on a frequent basis, on the day, so that we're able to exercise our true submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why, and that's why when we look throughout the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal has told us about His prophets who have done istighfar in different ways. Adam alayhi salam in his famous dua, Allahumma inni dhalamtu nafsi fa in lam taghfir li wa tarhamni la kunanna min al-khasirin. Yunus alayhi salam, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. So it's not only astaghfirullah which is one of the formulas in which we exercise the Prophet of Allah Azza. There are other different formulas and the most powerful formula of istighfar is taught to us by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a beautiful hadith in which he said to us, Sayyidu al-Istighfar an taqoola la ilaha illallah. The master of istighfar, 
the top, the most powerful tool of istighfar that you may exercise in your day and night is to say the following dua. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana rabbika wa ana ma'ani wa wa'alika ma sata'ta abuhu bi ni'matika alayhi wa abuhu bi dhambi faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated whoever says this dua early in the morning muqinan bi and the catch word here is muqinan bi what's muqinan bi? Is it only to say the dua when your mind is somewhere else? Is it only to say the dua when you're busy with your phone? Or is it only saying the dua when you're doing something else that, that, that's more worthy for you or for in your, in your, in your assessment? No. means fully comprehending and absorbing the meaning of every single word of the dua. That's what Mokana what are the consequences for doing that, Ya Rasulullah? The consequences for doing this is if you happen to die in your day, you are from the people of Al And if you say the same dua in the evening, muqin and be, fully comprehending and understanding what you just said, then and you happen to die at night, you will be from the people of Al Allah. That's very powerful. That's very powerful dua. Why not to memorize it? And not only to memorize it, but to comprehend it and as we Say the words, we feel them, we, we understand what they mean, so they are, they are able to empower us, so that we can get to the level of istighfar that would help us be able to create this dynamic relationship that Allah, the mighty, wants us to be able to create between us and Him. Allahumma anta rabbi. Ya Allah. Allah anta rabbi. Allah is Allah. We know the only word that describes the entity of Allah as the creator of this whole universe. As Allah challenged in the Quran in Surah Maryam, anyone else that who have been called or have called or will be called Allah in the, in the history of mankind, none. This is the word that describes, a pronoun that describes the, the creator of this whole universe, which is the mighty Allah. You say, Ya Allah, Allahumma, I am supplicating to you, Ya Allah, you are my Lord. What's the difference? Is it Allah my Rabb? No. Allah is the, the, the describe, describing the entity of Uluhiyya. But Rabbi is Rububiyya. It is one of the descriptions and one of the nouns of Allah Azza wa Jal in which you're saying, Ya Rabb, you are my Rabbi. Rabbi is Rabb. The master of the whole, the house of the whole, the master of the household. Or oh, Rabbatul Usra. The, the mother is called Rabbatul Usra and the father is called Rabbatul Usra because they are the household. They are the, the one who looks after the family. They are the ones who look after the children, provide for them, discipline them, teach them, raise them on the good values that they need to be raised on. And that's when you say, Ya Rabb, you are saying, Ya Allah, I am the true servant of yours, Ya Rabb al You are my master. You are my teacher. Therefore, whatever happens to me, Ya Allah, in my life, I am, Alhamdulillah, Hundred percent content and happy because I know it's not done for anything else but because of your love for me, Ya Rabbi. Allahumma anta Rabbi. La ilaha illa anta. None to be worshipped. None is ilaha except you, Ya Rabbi al-Alameen. A true submission to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Wa ana abduk. I am your true servant. I am your servant. An abd in the context of nowadays is hatred word. We don't like it. No one is like, like to be an abd to another human. No human like to be an abd for another human. But when you are an abd to Allah, it's a different story. When someone is an abd to another human, your master gets the best of you. But when you are an abd to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah the Mighty gets the best of what He has for you. That's the difference. And that's why should be part of the shit. I am a true abd to Allah Azza wa Jal. And an abd. Ya Allah, I am surrendering to you, uh, uh, submitting and, and, and fully acknowledging the fact that I am your true servant, Ya Rabb Al-Alameen, a true abd to you. Wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika, wa ila hadha rabbuka min bani adam min dhuhurihim, dhuriyatahum wa ashhadahum ala nafis. Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala. This is mentioned last in Surah Al-A'raf, when Allah Azza took all the children of Adam from the back of Adam alayhi salam, and testify on them, I am, am I not your Lord? And they all said, said with, without an exception, yes, Ya Allah, we, you are our Lord. 
وأنا على عهدك والذين هم بعهدهم وأمانات الله as Allah has mentioned in different places in the Quran, those who are protected to their ahd between them and Allah Azza wa Jalla. Wa wa'idna, the promise that you have given to me, the promise I have given to you, ala ahdika wa'idka mastata'ah. Acknowledging the fact that, Ya Rabbi, I am here. Mastata'ah, to the best of my ability. Acknowledging the fact that, Ya Rabbi, I, I am able not only to be a true servant of yours, that you would call me to do so, Ya Rabbi. I'm not going to be able to do it. Therefore, I am not only acknowledging the fact I am servant and I'm powerless and I am weak and you are the master, you are the mighty, you are the powerful, but at the same time I am asking you to be a power so that I can be a true servant to you. I completely acknowledge and 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 aware of the fact that there are countless bounties, now that you have shown me with from the minute I came to this dunya to the minute. Or whether it is the ability to be able to feed or to hear or to, to, have, to, to have the money to be able to buy and purchase and to provide for my family. This is all your ni'am, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wa abu'u biha. Ya Rabbi. At the same time, I acknowledge the fact that I am sinner. Ya Rabbi, abu'u biha. I admit I am weak creation of yours, Ya Rabbi Alameen. And as your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated, by Allah, if you do not sin and repent to Allah, Allah will take you away and replace you with others who sin and repent to Allah. So this is the ultimate, ultimate goal to achieve from exercising the istighfar to Allah Azza wa Jalla. To create this beautiful dynamic between Allah Azza wa Jalla, to which you constantly connect with Allah and pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla. I am in need for your Rabbi Alameen. In need for your Rabbi Therefore, Ya Rabbi, do not withdraw me from that. وَأَبُوهُ بِذَنْبِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَإِنَّهُ لَيَغْفِرُ الْحَذْبُ وَالْإِمَانِ Who but Allah is aware and able to forgive your sins? None. We don't need a third mediator. Your Lord is saying to you, I am willing to accept your tawbah as long as your ruh does not reach your throne. As long as your tongue does not come from your lips. This is what Allah is saying to you. And His doors are always open to you and none would be able to help you except Allah Himself. <laughs> if we were to say it with with iqan, then eventually you'll be for the leader of the Jannah wa kul qawli hada wa astaghfirullah Allah alayhi wa sallam astaghfirullah. This is what Ibrahim said. First, always give us a thought for yourself. Secondly, give it for all of others from, from the, all the Muslims so that you are exercising this brotherhood relationship between you and them. And as the Prophet indicated, whoever seeks his thought for him and the Muslimina and the Muslimat then we'll be gaining the ajr from all the Muslims from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up to the time of the rest of Allah. May Allah make us able to exercise this ibadah of istighfar fully from our heart with comprehension. So that whenever we say in the morning, we will be for the people of the Jannah to have a salute. Or we will say in the evening, we will be for the people from the people of the Jannah to have a salute. Allahumma ameen. Inna Allahumma ameen. Ya Allah. اللهم صل